Okay. Lots of news First this week. Up, yeah. All right, we've got from Sony Spresence and Framos the uh, Sony Spresence LTE add-on board. So if you have the Sony Spresence um, breakout, this is a board that adds like a bunch of stuff. It's not just LTE, although you do get a SIM card, by the way, so you can quit quickly going with your MB IoT uh, cell phone data projects, but it's also got like headphone out, it's got the micro USB connector, GPIO output, micro SD slot, and a bunch of other things. I don't remember the exact list. Check the product page for all the details, but it's basically a breakout plus it's got this cool uh, Sony LTE module on the back. It's the silver thing in the middle, it's so small. Uh, it's got a built-in antenna, which is kind of handy. You can see that big ass antenna. Oh, can you go back that one? And then uh, you can see uh, the micro, US, uh, micro SD and micro USB port in the top left, and then um, headphone speaker on the bottom left. And then uh, in the mid right, next to the coin is the uh, SIM slot. So, and it comes with a SIM, uh, I think it's a universal SIM uh, from True Phone. Um, you will have to, of course, uh, pay for usage, but uh, a lot of MB IoT SIMs are pretty cheap um, because you're not using SMS messaging. So uh, check it out, you're, you know, get a couple megabytes maybe, um, and then sign up um, to activate the True Phone SIM. Next up. Uh, next up, this is coming soon. Uh, this is the Lixi Chroma. So we're, we're still getting, um, we're just going to contact them because there's a little bit of a confusion about uh, whether you get one or two boards per pack. Um, I believe you get two boards per pack. Um, so one board has two digits. Uh, it's basically a NeoPixel array of two seven by five characters. And they've got a library you can use to, um, you know, display text and like little animations and stuff. Uh, one thing I will note, uh, the library does not work with anything other than the ESP32, 8266, um, or TNC3. I do want to verify with them that because it seems like it's based on fast LED. Um, that's just something to watch out for. So if you want to pick one of these up and you're using like a SAMD21 or an Arduino Uno, um, it's not going to work at this time. Uh, so we'll hopefully they can get that fixed, but this is coming soon. Um, it is a really nice way of adding chainable uh, digits for uh, fast messaging um, with you know, one pin because it's all uh, WS2812 based. Okay, next up, technically two products, but we're going to do them kind yeah. of at the same time. This, okay, so this is the Payunora from Diodes Delight, uh, Timon, who's been uh, working on this project for a while, and I'm so excited to see it came out. This is for use with the compute module from Raspberry Pi, which is unfortunately a little tough to get, but maybe you already have them. Uh, and also, there, you know, there are some coming into the market. So this is an, a board that kind of turns the uh, compute module four into an Arduino Uno. Um, so the compute module uh, plugs in into those like Hero C ish connectors. I think they're Hero C. Uh, and it gives you, um, so hold here. Uh, yeah, stop here. Uh, on the right, you see a micro SD slot, and I think there's a button on GPIO pin 26. Um, the pins are aligned out for the analog pins. It looks like there's an MCP. 3008 um, analog input to SPI converter. Uh, there's power pins, and then there's a bunch of uh, digital pins brought out. Um, because of the layout, there's no SPI pins, so just be aware that uh, if you are using a shield or something, you want to use an Arduino shield with SPI, just make sure it uh, is expecting the SPI pins not on the two by three header, but on like the Arduino Uno side of the header. Um, on the bottom, sorry, on the top, Left, there is uh, a STEMIQT QT slash quick connector, so you can quickly add um, I squared C devices um, from SparkFun or Adafruit or others. There is a switch for whether you want to use USB host or device. I think that's a good GPIO pin on the compute module, a USB C connector for that. Um, do note if it's USB host, obviously it's not PD, so I think it just, I think it'll just provide five volts flat. Uh, there is another USB connection uh, for USB device, uh, a NeoPixel on pin 12, and HDMI connection, uh, and then also a boot button, so if you want to load firmware onto the internal MMC. Um, and I think the micro SD slot, I'm assuming, can be also loaded with firmware. And then on the bottom, thank you for you being so go. patient. I know, there's so many things. On the bottom, the light version doesn't have anything. So the you see the bottom, there's like nothing Yeah, there. we stuck both. We stuck both. And if we have the picture of the bottom, yeah, of the Pro, there's a camera connector. Uh, there's an M2.5 adapter, so you can have like a SATA type thing, whatever, like M2.5, something you can get like disk drives and things. And also 
Um, there's a separate uh, switchable power supply as well, though I don't have the details memorized on that power supply. So yeah, do look it up. But like basically, vertigo. you get the camera port and the M2.5, um, which you know you can read about how to uh, integrate M2.5 devices um, okay. because it's similar to the compute module I.O. board, and then you also have those um, SMT nuts to mechanically attach various M.25 uh, cards. All right, next up. Oh, so much. Yeah, uh, I know, I know, but I wanted to. I wanted to give it a good time. Okay, this is the uh, shoot. I can't remember the name. I think it's the Pi port or the Pi Zero port. Um, yeah, why don't you look here? Sorry, this was. There's a lot of devices. This is the, the sorry zero, the Zero Dock. The Zero Dock. Zero Dock. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a cool product that I saw, um, and it has. Um, a little spot on the left for your Pi Zero, and we just bolted one on. It comes with the little solderless breadboard. It does not come with the Pi Zero, but once you've bolted everything in, there's all these like fun slots that you can like store things in, and then you can wire up um, circuitry as well. So I'll show this on the overhead because it's a little confusing, yeah, I think. Yeah, what size these? It, yeah, it's oh. plastic pieces, and it comes with a breadboard. Yeah. Okay, okay. so it's got um, header here. Uh, you know, the, the Pi Zero is mounted. You can still access the micro um, USB and the HDMI port and the SD port and the camera port. So there's, it's kind of above the plastic. And then this is just like, hi, I want to like store my like adapters and like whatever bits and cards. I kind of like the card holders actually, because that's really handy because I'm often swapping out. Um, like, you know, I have a Pi OS Lite and maybe like in, you know, um, media player. And then, um, you know, you have a little breadboard and you can just wire up like a button or a LEDs or whatever, just a little bit of space. Uh, I'll just note, it doesn't come with all these fun accessories or buttons and LEDs or the Pi Zero. It's just the plastic piece and the breadboard, but it's still very handy. Okay. And then next up, uh, we, well, this is kind of a star of the show almost um, because we have a lot more coming. And uh, it's beautiful, and it's from a friend of ours, and it's, uh, I think, one of the first, like, artisanal LED products. Uh, this is one of many, by the way. And uh, if y'all are in the maker world, you might remember Mark DeVink. Uh, I worked with Mark at Make Magazine. And Mark now has his own uh, USA-made uh, artisanal LED line. Yeah. So these are molded onto, I think, either a three millimeter or 1.8 millimeter LED. Um, this is the first of many. It comes as a five pack. So they're hand molded um, and it kind of got this kind of like cool crystal look, which could easily be used for like science or um, magic or um, like, you know, like ethereal elf project like it's actually like this crystal shape is kind yeah. of like multi-useful for and this is part of a whole collection so we just got these in today different feels so we got yes we only got to photo one before we ran out of time so i thought i'd just show it on the overhead it's a little tough for the overhead to, to focus in on it but it the whole thing does glow uh quite nicely um it is a little brighter in the, in the front but the whole thing has um like a neat crystalline look it's only single color here i'm just holding it with a coin cell battery and then this is what it looks like off. Um, so even though it's molded on top of an LED, you can't see, like it's really hard to see that there was something in the middle. It looks just like a, it looks just like a, a fully solidly molded um, LED diffuser. And uh, I like this shape. And there's a couple other shapes coming, um, but uh, to start, we've got this, uh, this nifty yellow stalagmite. I don't know what, what you would call these. Yeah, just crystalline. stalactite, stalagmite. Yeah, oh, yeah, just a crystal element. Uh, and more to come. So you get a pack of five with each order. Yay. Okay. Okay. All right, next, next. Uh, up. The start of the show, besides you, Lady, at our customers, our community, all the folks here at Adafruit, the staff, and anybody watching is... Do, 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 do. This is the ESP32... S3 Feather. So this is actually very similar to the S2 Feather that recently came out. So I'm going to go through all of the details here. So the ESP32 S3 is a um, new chipset from Espresso. It's kind of the latest one. And like the S2, it has native USB, which means it actually worked with CircuitPython. It can act as a disk drive. We've got Teeny USB library. Um, they use Teeny USB 
for support, so it can act um, like a keyboard or a mouse. Uh, it's got a built-in ROM bootloader, um, which is really handy, so you don't need a USB serial converter or any special chips. Um, it works with the ESP tool. And um, it kind of brings the power of the ESP32 to the ESP32. It's like the power of ESP32 plus the USB of ESP32 S2 equals ESP32 S3 because it's got dual core, again, uh, which people missed. It's got 524K of SRAM compared to like the 384K um, that was on the S2. So it's got like 200-ish more K of RAM, which is great, um, just built in so it's, it's, you can buffer a lot more faster. And um, it's got BLE back in it, so it's got Wi-Fi and BLE. Um, and the module itself is like almost completely pin compatible with the S2. It's like a tiny bit different, but we designed our, our, our Feather layout um, to work with either. And so this one just has different silk screen to indicate the S3. Um, but otherwise, it's a lot like our S2 Feather. Um, right now, there is not a version of the module with PS RAM. So we're just kicking it off with a version that has 8 mega flash, no PS RAM. But it does have that extra, like, it has the 500K of SRAM built in. And so we found that CircuitPython actually worked quite well with it. You can't buffer, like, huge files. But you can do a lot of basic Wi-Fi stuff. And, you know, the inclusion of BLE is super great. And then the dual core is awesome too. Um, Arduino support just got merged in uh, to, um, I think the pre-release and I think the release is coming soon. So it's quite new um, as of this video, but uh, a lot of people are gonna be using it. So I'm assuming it's gonna get better and better. Uh, there's Arduino support, like I said, CircuitPython support. It's like alpha, but uh, you can use it. And um, you, know, you want a more powerful ESP32. I think this is, you know, what's gonna really replace the classic ESP32 because it's got everything, you know, pretty much everything the original does um, with the native USB as well. And, um, the, you know, the processes have improved. Um, so it's actually cheaper to buy um, this chipset than the, um, the original ESP32. Um, other stuff on the board, actually I can go to this one real quick. I'll just uh, pop through it. Um, you've got uh, a reset button that can get into the bootloader. Uh, there's a built-in uh, Live poly charging as you'd expect for a feather. There is uh, a boot button that can be used to force into the bootloader. Uh, you can also use it as a GPIO input, I'm pretty sure. Um, there is an LC709203 uh, Live poly um, monitor. So instead of using a resistor divider, we actually have an I squared C chip that can monitor the battery for you and tell you the percentage and voltage of the battery. And there's a STEM QT port in the middle with a separate. 3.3 um, volts low dropout regulator. Um, so you can go into really low power mode with this board and it can go down to like, I think 50 to 70 microamps. And then you know, the I squared C port, you can turn that off as well. So you know, sometimes I squared C devices don't go into low power mode. So this gives you like an extra switch. Uh, there's also a little uh, NeoPixel as well. We've also got, um, there is a ROM bootloader. We also have a teeny USB, a separate secondary bootloader that shows up as a disk drive for people who like the teeny UF2 bootloader. Okay. That's good product. Woo.